Hello everyone, this is Dr. E and for today, pag-uusapan naman natin yung mga angles at paano tayo magsulat ng mga proper angle notations sa geometry. At tulad ng points, lines, and planes, may mga notations tayo na kailangan matutunan sa pagsulat ng uh, mga angles sa geometry at ang mga symbols na ito ay uh, makakatulong sa atin para sa pagsagot at pagintindi ng mga theorems, postulates, corollaries na makikita natin sa lesson natin ng geometry. So first, i-define natin kung ano nga ba yung mga angles in geometry. So by definition, an angle consists of two different rays with a common end point is called angle in geometry. At nakikita nyo sa diagram natin ngayon na meron tayong point A, B, and C at meron tayong angle 1 na makikita at identify natin yung mga parts na yan ng ating angle. So ang makikita ninyo dyan, yan ang dalawang rays na yan, yan yung tinatawag nating sides ng angle at yung ating uh, point of intersection ng dalawang lines na yan na makikita nyo ay point A. A, yan yung tinatawag nating vertex. So, by definition, the rays are the sides of the angle and the common end point is the vertex of an angle. At yung common point na yan, yan si point A na makikita ninyo dito sa ating diagram. So, yan yung ating illustration ng angles at ang definition ng mga parts ng ating mga angles according sa geometry. Now, paano ba natin na isusulat properly ang mga pangalan ng ating mga angles. Dito sa ating example na ito, pwede natin gamitin ang angle A o yung capital letter A na kung saan pwede natin i-represent yung angle as yung vertex point ng ating angles na nakikita. Pwede din natin gamitin ang angle 1 at yun yung nakikita natin nasa loob ng dalawang rays natin. Pwede din natin isulat as angle C, A, B, and notice na yung ating gitnang letter, yun yung ating vertex. Dahil pwede natin i-interchange yung mga sides natin, pero hindi natin pwedeng paltan yung ating vertex. So yung measurement or yung angle C, A, B, pwede natin i-rewrite as angle B, A, C. And again, sa pagsulat ng measurement ng angle gamit ang tatlong letters, pwede natin gamitin dito sa angle na ito, C, Vertex A, point C, at point B, pwede natin siyang isulat as CAB, pwede ding BAC, yan, BAC or CAB, pero hindi natin pwedeng isulat as ACB. So yan ay hindi wastong pagsulat ng angle galing sa ating mga notation na nakikita dito sa ating angle. So, para makita nyo ng gusto, ito yung ating vertex na A, ito C, C, at ito C, B. At yan yung ating mga pamamaraan kung paano tayo magsulat ng angle measurement sa geometry. And kung meron tayong mga parts ng ating angles, meron din tayong uri ng mga angles according dito sa diagram natin. Meron tayong tinatawag na interior of an angle which contains all the points between two sides of an angle. So ito yung tinatawag nating interior, yung nasa loob ng ating angle. At syempre, kung meron tayong interior, meron din tayong exterior. At ang ating exterior angle... By definition, the exterior of an angle contains all points that are not in the interior of an angle and are not on the angle. So yan yung ating dalawang types ng angle using uh, the illustration that we're seeing. Meron tayong interior nasa loob ng angle at exterior nasa labas ng ating angle. Now, how do we identify and name angles? Pwede natin yung i-identify at pangalanan tulad ng ginawa natin sa previous slides. So, let's practice our new skill on how to name different angles. So, makikita ninyo sa diagram, meron tayong uh, groups of angles. So, paano ba natin i-identify yung mga angles na yan? So, there are several ways on how to do this. So, for letter A, how many different angles are in the diagram? So, kung bibilangin natin yan, meron tayong 1. Yan yung ating 
angle 1. Pwede din natin kunin yung isa pang angle 2. So, different angle yan kay angle 1. At meron pang isa, at yan naman yung angle MPQ. So, yan yung ating mga angles na makikita sa ating diagram dahil using the definition ng ating angle, we're able to produce these names or these notations gamit yung mga rules na natutunan natin today. Now, paano, na ba na, paano naman natin isusulat halimbawa yung angle 1? So, is there another way of naming angle 1 in this example? Siyempre, Meron. Pwede natin gamitin yung angle MPN and notice na yung ating vertical or yung ating vertex ay yung P at pwede din natin siyang pangalanan na NPQ tulad ng ginawa natin kanina sa slide. So, dalawang um, names ang pwede natin gamitin kay angle 1 as a replacement. Pwede MPN, pwede NPM. Pwede ring angle 1. Pero, it cannot be angle P, M, N. So, tandaan natin na yung ating panggit ng letters sa ating angle should always be the vertex of our angle. Now, isa sa mga devices na ginagamit natin sa geometry ay ang protractor. At ang protractor, this is an instrument which is shown in this diagram na pwede makamesure ng angles in units called degrees. So, degrees, ang unit of measurement natin or angles, at gagamitin natin yan sa pag-measure nitong angle na ito. So, makikita natin dito si angle, papangalanan, siya, papangalanan natin to ng tama. So, dito sa angle na ito, ang nakikita ko ay angle C, A, B. Pwede din natin siyang i-name as angle A, at pwede din natin siyang gamitin angle B, A, C. At ang kailangan natin hanapin ay yung measurement ni angle C, A, B, and to be able to do that using the protractor, all we need to do is look at the angle that is formed using the protractor at ang nakikita natin dito ay 30 degrees. So yung ating uh, terminal side or yung side na ito ng ating angle, yun ang susukat nitong ating protractor which is giving us 30 degrees. At isa pa sa mapapansin natin dito, merong number or unit of measurement on top of 30 degrees at ito naman yung um, kapag ginamit natin yung protractor, binaliktad natin siya, ito yung magiging measurement niya, 150 degrees. Pero hindi ito yung ginagamit natin kasi 150 degrees we know is an obtuse angle and obviously this is an acute angle, so the correct measurement will be 30 and not 150 degrees dahil alam natin na si angle CAB ay acute angle. So yan ang kailangan natin tandaan kung paano tayo gumamit ng mga angle measurement using a protractor. So meron tayong angle A as 30 degrees na pwede ding CAB or BAC. At kung kukuha pa tayo ng pangalawang angle, like this, let's name it as A sub 1. So, ang A sub, I mean, A sub 2, dahil yung A, A sub 1 natin is 30 degrees, siya ay 100 degrees and not 80 degrees, dahil 80 degrees is less than 90, which is an acute angle. Obviously, this is an obtuse angle. So, this is a 100 degree um, or 100 degrees na angle na na-form natin. At ito namang A sub 3 natin, um, represented by the green angle right here, we would see 70 and 110. And of course, hindi siya 110 because it's an acute angle. So this is definitely a 70 degree angle. So ganito lang kasimple yung paggamit natin ng protractor, which is a device we use to measure angles similar to what we just did in this slide. Ngayon, kung meron tayong uh, 1, 2, 3, four or three measurements na kailangan kunin, paano natin gagamitin si protractor? So, let's start with this angle and we will name this angle as angle MQR at si MQR ay nasa 130 or, or between 50 and 40 degrees. So, nasa gitna siya. So, 45 degrees ang measurement ng angle na yan. So, si M or RQM or MQR ay 45 degree angle at ang type of angle na yan na na-form ay acute 
angle. So, ang susunod naman natin ay yung angle na ito, represented by this blue rays right here. So, nakikita natin na tinutumbok niya ang 90 degrees. So, that means this is a 90 degree angle and we know that we have a special name for a 90 degree angle in geometry and we can call this as a right angle. So, this is how we name angles using a protractor and the last angle that we're going to be working on is an obtuse angle obviously, and its measurement is in between 170 and 160 degrees. So this one is 165 degrees. At yan yung ating angle, NQR or RQN or angle Q, since maraming Qs dyan na vertex na ginagamit natin ng Q, so name natin siya as three letter angle. And this one is an obtuse angle which is 165 degrees. At ganito natin ininename ang ating mga angles in geometry. Now, congruent angles. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng congruent? Ang ibig sabihin ng congruent sa mathematics or sa geometry ay magkakaparehas na sukat at magkakaparehas ng laki. So dito, two angles that have the same measure are called congruent angles. Now, you can recall that the symbol, that symbol, means congruent. So, ito ang isa sa pinakamahalaga or isa sa mga mahalagang symbol sa geometry. So, ito yung ating symbol for congruency. So, meron tayong equal sign and then a little bit of wave dito sa ating top na bahagi ng ating symbol. So, ito yung tinatsabi natin o tinatawag nating congruent symbol at ito yung symbol na ginagamit natin para kung i-describe natin si measurement ng angle A which is congruent kay measurement ng angle B, hindi na natin kinakailangang isulat as A is congruent to angle B dahil Nire-replace nito ang ating mathematical symbol and that's why mathematics is beautiful because we have symbols for phrases and words na pwede nating i-shortcut gamit ang ating mga symbols. So yan, a, um, angle A is congruent to angle B can be written using this form. So yan yung ibig sabihin ng congruency, magkaparehas ng sukat. Tulad na nakikita natin sa diagram, meron tayong angle A which is 30 degrees at angle B which is also 30 degrees. And when their angles are congruent, their measurements are also congruent. So yan ang tatandaan natin sa congruency ng ating mga angles. We mark congruent angles with exactly the same number of arcs as shown on the figure. So another symbol that you need to be familiar with is yung ating arc doon sa ating mga um, angle measurement na tatandaan natin. Halimbawa, meron tayong dalawang angle. Ito si angle A at ito si angle B. Kung siya ay parehas na 30 degrees, kailangan din instead of uh, or aside from naming or writing out yung ating degree measure, pwede din natin gamitin yung arc na yan. Pwedeng sobra, pwedeng eksakto. So yan yung ating notation or symbol na ginagamit para sa congruency ng ating mga angles sa geometry. At yan yung ating lesson for today on congruency. Kaya, kayang-kaya nyo nang kunin yung measurement ng ating angles gamit ang ating protractor. At ang gusto kong kunin ninyo ay ang angle measurement ni angle MAP which is represented by this green angle. So yan si MAP. Ano nga ba ang measurement niyan? So tandaan natin na Kakaiba yung measurements nito, katulad dun, hindi katulad ng ating mga nagdaang examples, but I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to figure this out. So comment it down below and let's see kung tama ang magiging measurements ninyo base sa gamit ng ating protractor. At yan ang lesson natin ngayon sa geometry. At lagi kong sinasabi, na pag, sa, especially sa pag-aaral ng geometry, it's like learning a foreign language. Tulad ng mga symbols na natutunan natin ngayon at pamamaraan kung paano tayo magsulat ng mga angles in geometry, it will help us understand some problems and even uh, postulates and conditions na pag-aaralan natin as we move on sa ating lesson sa job. This is Dr. E, and see you again next time. Ah.
Bye.